But uh, my dad apparently had been asked, and my mother became pregnant, and he got he was asked, and he said yes. So everything took its course on that basis, and uh, and then the you know I got I was born. But was was interesting my entire life, which I could never understand. My dad could never ever put his arms around me. He could never give me a hug, and he was never able to tell me I love you. Now, I'm his daughter, and as I learned how other fathers reacted with their daughters, it wasn't normal. But uh, I went on in my life. I didn't let it be disruptive. I had a very good upbringing. I had uh, never really needed or wanted for anything. So I was, you know, my dad was very successful. But I always thought it interesting. He could never tell me he loved me or never put his arms around me in particular. So I just had to go on that basis, and then I started getting information. The fact that he was doing work for the government, his work for the government increased as I got older because he was new in the industry that he was in. And then as time went on, he, you know, went through the bidding process, but he was getting more and more more contracts with the government. So you start putting the pieces of the puzzle together, and it, it starts to make sense on that basis. What verified the hybridization is when my DNA had to be done uh, about 12, 13 years ago. My DNA can't be read. can't be read by the hospital mm-hmm. I was sent to. Oncology spent six months taking my blood every single month. They've never been able to read my DNA. Ancestry.com I took as a, as a lark to think what would happen. They couldn't read my DNA. What ha- no, tell me what, they, what, did they, what did they say when they, they got your... Because uh, TJ's daughter went through some of this stuff. and TJ, you can share. What was going on with your daughter's blood? Oh, I have no are idea there, about TJ? my daughter's blood. This is my... This is no, my talk, no, no, no. I'm talking about Teresa. Are you there? Because she had oh, a yeah, this puzzle. Well, she's found out she's 100% uh, reading in her bones now, leukemia. But uh, when they they could read it as far as how do you read DNA, but uh, they found out that she had other than, and she wasn't really, uh, she's classified as other. Uh, it's almost like being non-human. <laughs> So uh, there's exactly. reasons for that. So uh, yeah. I imagine it's something similar. They don't tell us the details, Janet. Just uh, they kept the questions the doctors were doing for us in Moffitt Cancer Research Hospital and telling us and mm-hmm. asking me about if I was an alien or something, and they were serious. And I was like, Did well, they say that? Sort of, Are you an alien? Yeah. Did they actually use yeah. the word alien? Oh, my uh-huh. God. Wow. Really? They never wow. did that with me. They just told me I had an anomaly that looked like cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, presuming there was cancer in my blood, and they couldn't tell what type of cancer, so I had to go to oncology. And it was in a major hospital facility, and six months in a row, they can't read my DNA. But they never said I was alien, or they, I knew about myself at this point. But how could I tell them? What am I going to say to them? Do you want to, you know, people don't even understand the word experiencer. So how am I going to tell them that I'm a hybrid? They don't even know what that is. So it's, it's one of those things you live with and you deal with. It's not like I can go and talk to anybody I meet about this. It doesn't make sense. And uh, what did you tell them? Did you, did you say I'm an alien or did you say it's a mystery to me? What did you say to them? Me? Because that's the first I've heard it. Yeah. Like, well, I've heard yeah, Are you asking me or TJ? Piece of the puzzle. I'm asking TJ and it, because it's okay. tying in with yours. So they didn't ask sure. you if you're an alien, but your people They wanted asked to know how you. I created my daughter. They wanted right. to know, and I, I said, and what well, did you God. say? I said, God. I said, well, God. They're like, no, seriously. Uh, they were asking me very uh, – it wasn't the normal, you know, in the office like you – it was in a – you know, I mean like a doctor's office. We'd already left the doctor's office and gone down. But, see, we'd been used to this because it started in 
27, 2016 and then 2017. But the questions they asked were doctors that came up from like uh, Brazil where Gigi was part Brazilian. So they had a doctor come up. It was all uh, – we were working around Nordics, what's called Nordics, and the lady that was Nordic. And then I, I said, well, I've been told that you know I, my name is Thurmond, and I, uh, that means Thor's protection. And from Thurmond was Thurber, and from Norway, and we were Nordics. And they were like, yes, we're familiar with the Nordics. And they asked about – most of them are German and want to know our German descent. I said, I've never heard of any German descent of my family. Only Norway from my father's side, but we were English, and my mother's Bolton, and so they went through the basic that you ask, but then they were like, above that, above you know, what's your family genealogy? They were like, now, but what are you? You know, so they wanted to like, do you? They were good, basically asking me, you know, are you from an, another place, not here, or, or do you know of? Uh, and, and I was like, yeah, like you know, what are you talking about? He says like alien. I said, well. I always heard that, that we were, and uh, they said, I was like, why are you asking me how I created my daughter? You know, my daughter was very embarrassed sitting there and didn't want me to talk. She was so embarrassed because she didn't want to, we've had this problem, you know, in the family with my husband's because I believe you had to be married to have sex. So it was very personal. It was very deep, and it was very confidential. So uh, I said, yeah, I believe that I had her differently, and I did die when I had her, and I think it was somewhat of an experiment that I wanted to have a brown eyed blue eyes and brown hair blue eyes, and I would create this with my mind. And, you know, yeah, I believe that we're somewhat of an alien DNA. And uh, But it was extremely important to them, but they've dropped her now because she's 100%. So now they'll do is she goes, starts a new regimen on some strong cancer in her, them to give her. By two weeks right now, she has blood coming out of her eyes and ears and nose and just trying to oh. stay alive. Two weeks. Oh, I'm and so sorry. Yeah, it's uh, she was that. an experiment. She accepted that she was. She knows she was ET and uh, an avatar. She was born with a tail, and uh, she's related to the movie mm-hmm. Avatar. But it's unfortunate that the government spent all this money in her and me both, and when I was born, you know, I knew I was extraterrestrial or had a other family, but it's just we never talk about it. So what's happened now in 2019 mm-hmm. with the realization of losing my husband that was E.T. hybrid and then me knowing it and my child losing okay. her to coming in wanting mm-hmm. to fight cancer when we knew we had cures for it. But that was her mission, and uh, it's unfortunate that I've got to go through this now, and I don't know why I keep going through death and dying firsthand to be there but uh, it's a whole nother show and a whole nother story but you, next two weeks I don't even know yeah. how many radio shows but it does have to do yeah, with what we're creating here and the positive side is we yeah. come here and we're all blended together for whatever reasons and we take with us what we can accomplish or learn in a physical container so uh, you know we all have mm-hmm. our part we all have our gifts and for whatever reason it's very unfortunate because she really wants to live here, but she knows that uh, she's immortal, and we're only passing through here. We call this the bus stop of the galaxy, you know, yeah. for those that blend. Yeah. Yeah. So back to you. So Janet just wanted to know more about the reality that doctors I, are yeah, dealing I just with people. Thought that was, yeah, I thought that was an important key because, you know, I like to put the pieces of the puzzle together and try to figure out the commonalities. So you're – you're having this experience, and, and uh, Teresa's daughter's having that experience. Okay, so go on to the um, – let me see. Next where part. I, I got confused about where I was. <laughs> so let's go back in time because you were in school. You you were told this about your DNA. Uh, how old were you when that happened? Confused you about your to blood. You? I'm talking back talking to you. talking to me Abby. now? Okay. Yes, I Matthew sure. Annie. I want to make sure. I did want to say I'll say the name. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, so back to you, my, Annie. So you were okay. how old when they were telling you this stuff? On the, you mean on the DNA in, in general, or yes. or just overall? Okay. Uh, well, it was um, I'm 75 now. I'm very active, very healthy. 75. So we're going back. Uh, do the math. Back to around uh, 2005, roughly, and uh, so. 
whatever that is, I was about in my early 30s, maybe, no, 40s. I was probably in my 40s uh, when the DNA first became apparent, 40s, somewhere in my 40s. And, no, maybe 50s. Yeah, late 40s, early 50s, I guess. And the But the other thing that happened when I was 26, so I can finish that part, uh, I got pregnant in the spring. I was 69. The doctor confirmed I was pregnant. Everything seemed fine. I went back for my third, my, my first trimester exam. Doctor said, where's the baby? I said, what do you mean? He said, you're not pregnant. Well, turned out I was used as an incubator for a baby. And now, the, the, and I always asked, I, I, I realized what happened because I didn't bleed or anything. It was, you know, they just took the baby from me at two and a half months. So uh, I went on. I did get pregnant again about uh, maybe nine months later and uh, had our first daughter. But I always asked what happened to the baby, what was it, how, you know, the baby, et cetera. Now, can I jump ahead just to a few years ago for a moment and sure. go back again? Sure. Uh-huh. Uh, I was at the, I was at the, the MUFON Congress, and uh, there was a, a talk on Meet the Hybrids. And a young lady walked up onto the stage. And I'm not going to use names, but I, I know who she is. And uh, when she walked up on the stage and approached the dais, speak about her life my beings loud and clear said this is the child you've been asking us about since you carried her this is the baby you incubated for us the timing the age everything was incredibly right on and I was in tears I was in tears learning I have been asking them a good part of my life since since I got since I was pregnant with her. And uh, I, I thank them profusely for letting me know. And I, I, I felt like my life turned a whole new corner because now I understood something. I was aware of it. Not that I understood it. I understood it. But now I, I was given that information. And uh, I asked if I could introduce, introduce myself. And they said, well, it's not normal for you to do that. So if you wish, and they had learned to trust me, and they said, if you wish, just be very, very cautious about what you say and how you you act. So I I did meet up with her, and I introduced myself and very briefly mentioned and wanted to let her know I'm not here. I'm not causing any problems for you. I said, this was the chance of a lifetime to tell you what an absolutely beautiful woman and intelligent woman you became, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing said. And my whole life has changed now because I've had a chance to know who the baby was that I incubated. And that was it. And I never talked to her again. I never saw her again. It was a very unusual situation. And I was only hoping that she wouldn't turn negative on me. But she didn't because I was crying as I'm talking to her. So I I didn't stay long. I just thanked her for that opportunity and that was it. Nothing, nothing happened after that. I got pregnant, as I said, about nine months later. I got pregnant again and went on, and we had our family. Um, but that was a very interesting scenario for me to go through because it was another verification or validation, uh, probably about myself. Uh, I'm not. I don't feel I'm a hundred percent hybrid. I have. I don't have any external. Uh, features uh, that appear to be uh, of anything but human. Internally, I did when I had a hysterectomy, not a hysterectomy, when I had a uh, an appendectomy, it was an emergency. Uh, doctor said an hour, hour and a, you know, maybe an hour is, you know, they go in, they take it out, they stitch you up. And it took two and a half hours. Well, it turns out, I found out later from my mother that they couldn't find my appendix. It wasn't where it was supposed to be. So that was something else that was apparent about me. Uh, and a lot of a lot of other things have to do with capabilities. Uh, you know, some people will say, well, some humans have that. Well, that could be true. Mine may be ex- excessive and all that. Things that I can see, things that I can hear, things that I can just know about. 
uh, I mean, the seventh grade. There was no way I ever knew about Einstein's theory of relativity when I opened up that book. 